Hey tubers, what we're going to work on today is the automatic clutch linkage for this 2000 Recon 250. It's a two wheel drive. So I have the eBay linkage right here and when you have a hoard like I do sometimes you have to kind of dig it out and find it and all that kind of stuff. And I've taken the um, inner fenders out of here. Um, not exactly pretty. Actually, how to use a grinder on this one, um, but they're out. And now it's time to take all these out of here. And it looks like a really pretty easy job, right? We'll just tap them out with this and. Um, at the same time we're doing this, this thing is obviously going to get an oil change, right? When that cover comes off, the oil will come right out. Okay, tubers, all the bolts are out. And by the way, I saw Musty One do this on a transmission. And Kevin Bergeron and I were talking about it. Um, just taking a moment and laying out a circle to where the bolts go with a marking on top and the bottom. I actually put an extra hole in here and I wrote a no next to it. That really, really helps. Um, and it also recycled this, um, this box that came as packing, right? Gets to do a second, a second bidding. So um, I got it loose and then um, see the little tab right there. I think you guys could see it, you know. You kind of put a screwdriver on it, give it a couple of taps, right? Gently, careful, don't want to break anything. And it came right loose. And there we are, all the oil is draining out. So um, let's let that drain for a few minutes so we don't make too much of a mess. Then we'll go forward. The cover is off. And important, 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 make sure, like, there's this little shim thing here. You don't want to lose these things because suddenly the shaft is not necessarily riding in the right place. And also, um, you don't want the case getting chewed up. So, I know this, this one was here, which is good. I got to check to make sure that one isn't floating around somewhere and none of the others are missing. Now, just to explain to you guys how this works. This clutch here is actually a, I'm calling it a manual clutch. And that one there is the centrifugal clutch. When you let off the throttle, that clutch slips, just like on a mini bike. Now this clutch, I'm calling it a manual clutch, because instead of, you know, squeezing the left hand grip, as you shift, this moves, and if you look down here, right, you see how you got this little incline? So as it moves, those balls roll up on the incline, whether you're upshifting or downshifting, push in on the manual clutch, which disengages it, which allows you to shift better. Remember I mentioned this thing was clunky when shifting. Well, that means the automatic clutch is working just fine, right? But as you're throttling down, the engine speed is slowing things down until finally you get the engine slow enough, right? So the clutch disengaged, but meanwhile you're scrubbing a bunch of speed, right? Um, using engine ba braking, basically. And you shift it, and if you're not in exactly the right place, obviously the gears will clunk. These have synchro mesh transmissions. So they will shift, but if you keep doing that, you are beating up on the gears and eventually you'll get some kind of failure. So it's much better to have your automatic clutch working properly. So once again, as you step on the pedal, it disengages the manual clutch. You shift, you let go, and it re-engages the manual clutch and you go forward. 
So um, that's just one thing. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing, there's no way fighting with gravity that I'm going to be able to put all this back together again. I'm actually going to have to stand this bike up on its back wheels, um, set every, everything into place, and then put the cover on over it. Once again, with gravity, this stuff is all just going to fall downward. And, and once again, I'm never, ever, ever going to get it in the right place. So at some point, I'm going to have to stand this thing up. Hopefully this is one of them that stands on its back legs uh, in a stable fashion. This thing is kind of the way it is because um, whoever built the sissy bar for it built it a little too long. So it kind of leans forward just enough so that if a tire loses any air, it kind of goes flat and uh, falls down. So um, hopefully I don't have that problem with this because I'm never going to get that cover back on without, um, without being able to stand it up. Now I, I mentioned before I started any of it, these videos that my problem with this guy and I deliberately um, brought some empty containers up here so nothing wants to get lost, right? Um, that I'm not able to adjust this. Well, when you're not able to adjust this, and this guy's all the way in, as you're shifting, you can see there's not much push here. So as you're shifting, um, all, all the movement gets tied up in the linkage and you never push against the manual clutch so it never disengages so um, um, what I need to do is I need to change this guy he's all he's all boogered up it's interesting that there's no washer there okay um, I'm going to do that and uh, I'll turn the camera on when anything else interesting happens. So I took the clutch adjuster out of this and you can see how it's boogered up. And the real problem is um, this is threaded into here. So as you turn the piece with the screwdriver, it kind of takes up the play. This is the one I bought. And for some reason they have a... Um, galvanized washer on there I don't that just doesn't belong there um, I'm not sure why why they have that there that that doesn't look right but you can see how as you unscrew this you would take up the play once again I'm not that washer was in there and it was doing something but um, that doesn't look like it belongs there you can see down in there I think there's that little o-ring you kind of need that to uh, to seal to make the oil seal so now it's a matter of putting this back in right the bolt is um, I got to take the bolt and washer off and that goes in first and then as I tighten it down that sits right there and uh, I'm going to have to stand this on its uh, on its tail and put the cover right back on. Um, the gasket looks really nice. So quite honestly, I'm just going to oil that gasket and put it right back on. And I'm going to do that for a couple reasons. First of all, I want to um, kind of get oil into this thing, get it adjusted, make sure it's working right. I do have a gasket to change into this, but um, I want to... I mean, if this gasket works, doesn't leak, I'm going to leave it. Um, and assuming the clutch works properly, I'm just going to let it all be just as it is. If, um, if I do have to take it apart because it's leaking oil or for functionality or whatever, I, I have a spare gasket to put right in there. Okay, so that's been replaced and I made sure that it's not seized up and it's able to move. All good the other thing I did is I very carefully um, drained the oil from there into that container and I just wanted to make sure there was no more thrust washers or 
case protecting washers or anything else missing. I also like to look at the um, at the uh, the bits and pieces in the oil to see if there's anything falling apart in there, and it it really really looked pretty nice and clean. So um, that's all good news. If some of you say what's um, what's that in there? That's some solvent that I kind of use to rinse this out. So. Um, you know you try to catch as much of that stuff as possible you just you really don't want it on the ground or anything um, even when I'm spraying off parts is it the best thing in the world to do I, I always I always try to catch as much as possible in a container let it evaporate or you know like I got cardboard on the floor here um, that'll go out in the garbage and um, um, for Dutchess County where I live there's a um, burn plant so um, it just it just goes to the burn plant and uh, gets turned into BTUs and those BTUs get fed um, to the IBM plant on the Hudson River to uh, to provide heating y you know <laughs> it's better to not generate waste at all but if you have to it's best to make sure it's cared for properly anyway um, I'm avoiding it, but I I have to uh, get this thing propped up on its back wheel to get that to get everything back in the place and to get that cover back on. So I might as well just stop fussing about and do it. Just a quick video to show how everything goes back together again. So this is on the outside of the manual clutch. That's the bearing. This actually slips into that right and it goes all the way in that goes spring down and goes right here like that right you put it in position then you slide this thing in this little piece is what increments this and this actually slides onto your shifter linkage and I showed it to you here and this is what it looks like all put together. I don't know what's the best place to show you from. Okay, there you go. Right. So now you should be able to see every everything right where it belongs. Right. And I remembered to put that washer right here. I think I'm showing it to you right there you go right put the washer right back on so supposedly I can put the cover on and everything is good supposedly by the way this piece here was a little hard to slide in because there was some oil in the place it goes into so you push it down and it pushes back up like a piston. You push it down and it pushes back up. So you got to kind of rock it as you push it down to kind of let the air pressure out from around it. Anyway, I'm going to attempt to put the cover back on. That's always kind of the hard part because, you know, that has to line up and go in the right hole without any problems, as does that. And it's all got to kind of and this top one here too everything's got to kind of rock and get itself in the right hole anyway I did wipe the gasket surface to make sure there's no grit or trouble made sure the case was all good so um, did a little inspecting on the inside this really looks like a pretty nice motor so hopefully after this everything is good okay tubers it's all put back together again and now it's a matter of adjusting the clutch. You'll see decrease goes in that direction, and that means decreasing the amount of play in the linkage. And you see increase goes in this direction, increasing the amount of play in the linkage. So, right, you can see it's loose, it's loose. And right there, it's decreasing the play in the linkage. Now, it says what you do is you make it so that you're just barely tight and you back it off a quarter turn. I kind of like it better 
especially on these older machines, not quite that much. So I kind of make it so that I know it's loose. And then what I'll do is I'll take the box wrench, hold the screwdriver piece, and tighten it up there. So I kind of go an eighth of a turn, three sixteenths, right, right around there. Not quite a full quarter. And there we are. Now it should be just a matter of putting oil in this thing, putting it the rest of the way back together again, drilling out a bolt I broke right here, and retapping it, and all should be good. Okay, tubers, let's finish this adventure. Remember what I told you I wanted this quad to be? I wanted it to start that easy. And when I put it in gear, let me show you. So it's in gear, I'm giving it gas and nothing's happening. And I let it go and it goes right it engages that manual clutch. So, how about a little ride? exactly like it's supposed to be. Popped it into neutral, rolled it right in. Once again, first, we're not holding it, no movement, let it go, and pull tray forward. I love it. So, this was a uh, successful mission. I want to thank everybody for watching, commenting, and subscribing. If you get a chance, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. And uh, please share if you get a moment. Anyway, thanks everyone. Take care.